If you go to God in prayer, I'll tell you. Sorry, but. Sorry? All right, Altia. So, 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 Altia, you, you are correct. So, we go out to where you said. God works in your heart, Altia. Altia. So, so, God works in your heart, and then you go to Him and repent and confess your sins, and you're forgiven. That's there. You go. There you go. But God is the one who is the first mover. He comes to you and He changes your heart, and then you go to Him. That's the explanation because if you were the one who went to God, then you could say these words. And because me go to him, make him save me. And you would have reason to boast. Alright, Brown, in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. Yeah, so me actually know the verse, me actually know the verse. Chapter 1, verse 18. Brunin, so the verse you quoted was Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, right? Isaiah 1, 18? Yeah. Brunin, are you a turn now, Brunin? Isaiah 1, 18, right? Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18? Isaiah 6, verse what? May I answer a question, man? Um, Brownin. Brownin. What verse is it? 618 or 118? All right, all right. Tell you what. Quote the words for me and I'll remember it for you. Quote the words for me and I'll remember the verse for you. Quote it. Brownin, quote the words and I'll tell you the verse because I know the Bible. Come on. All right, man, no, I want you not talk, man. A 118. All right, Brownin. I think I found it. 118. I'll read it for you. Come now and let us reason together. Says the Lord, though your sins are as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they will be white like wool. Brownin, did you hear that? Okay. This is my explanation. Are you ready? Oh, sorry about that. Um, though your sins are scarlet, come and they will be white as snow. What? What? Listen to these words, um, Brownin. Deuteronomy chapter chapter seven. Verse six to verse seven. The Lord did not set his love on your on you rather, nor choose you because you were more in number than any of the people, for you were fewest of all people. Verse six says these words. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his own possession out of all the peoples of the earth, for on the face of the earth. The verse that you quoted, Brownin, in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Oh, today I sat the Adventist them. Adventist them who follow LNG White. God bless, God bless, God bless. Yeah, so Brownin, the verse you quoted in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, where God says, Come, though your sins are scarlet. You know who he was talking to? Do you know who he was talking to? Brownin. It's because she asked me a question. All right, all right. Sorry, Brownin. I'm going to leave you alone now. Here. All right, so this is the question at hand. 
Can you go to God on your own? Or does God have to do a work in your heart first before you come to Him? The answer is this. God has to do a work in your heart first. You know why? Because you are a slave of sin, the Bible says. And slaves cannot free themselves. That's why the Bible says these words. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. That's what the Bible says, that if Christ makes you free, you are free indeed. If you are living in sin, you know why you do it? Because you are a slave of sin. And the only way that you can be free, the only way that you can be saved, is if God frees you. God has to be the one to work first. And I'll tell you, when God works in your heart, then you pray to Him and you're forgiven. You hear out here, when God works in your heart, then you pray to Him and He forgives you. But God has to be the one to work first. God bless you, man. God bless. God has to be the one to transform your heart. I know this is hard for many of you to believe, but that's what the truth of the Word of God is. That God is the sinner seeker. You are not the God seeker. God is the sinner seeker. He seeks for that which is lost. He seeks for the sinner. Not the sinner for him. Boy, Bryn! <coughs> Boy, Bryn! Yeah, you hear me? Yeah, you hear me, Boy, Bryn? She, she, she come and tell me, say, God, hear sinner prayer. I'm going to quote some verse and say, God, not hear sinner's prayer. She said, me, I tell a lie. The Bible says, what the Bible say? So tell me now, boy, what am I supposed to do? Believe she or believe the Bible? What am I supposed to do? Give me some advice. I have to believe the Bible, though. No? I have to believe the Bible. See, that thumbs up. Thumbs up to the boss. I have to believe what the Bible says. I'll tell you, I have a question for you. <clears throat> God bless you. I have a question. Do you believe that there are people in the world who are children of the devil? All right. Can I read something to you and hear what you have to say about it? All right, Adam, I'll read one verse to you. All right, I'm going to read this to you and tell me what you think. Tell me what your interpretation is. Um, 1 John 3.10 By this, you yeah, hear me? By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. So the text says, those who do, do not practice righteousness is of the devil. And they are the children of the devil. And those who practice righteousness. Yeah? So when God changes your heart and he makes you his child, you're no longer a child of the devil, right? See, you believe the truth, man. See, you believe the truth. You believe the truth. So Alti agreed... That there are those in this world who are children of the devil, and until God makes you his child, you're not his child. No, man, you're not a devil. No, you're not a devil. Alti, you're, you're not a devil. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you're a child of. You're a pitney of. Sit on your father. That's, what, that's why um, the Bible says this, for example. John 8, 44. John 8, 44, it says these words. Listen carefully now. It says this. You are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. This is Christ talking to the Pharisees. Did the Pharisees have the devil as their father? Oh, yeah. 
Because those who live in sin, Altia, are children of the devil. And you know what else too, Altia? God does not listen to the prayers of Satan's children. First, God makes you his child by giving you the spirit of adoption. And then you are a child of God. Then you are a son of God. That's why the Bible says these words. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Whoever is led by the spirit of God, these are sons and daughters of God. But, not everyone is led by the Spirit of God. That means that not everyone is God's children. And that's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth of God's Word. That's the truth of God's Word. That those who live in sin, everyone, are children of the devil. God does not hear the prayers of the wicked. I'm sure you guys can even remember this verse. If I regard iniquity in my heart, Altia, you hear the one there? You hear the one there, Altia? They can't finish it for me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, what will happen if I pray? The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear my prayer. You believe the one there? Because God don't play around with sin. God don't accept sin. God does not accept sin. Anybody who lives in sin, God shuts his ear. He shuts off his ear against them. There's another one, Isaiah 59, verse. <laughs> listen to this one, listen to this one. This one is so clear. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not so short that it cannot save, nor is his ear so dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities, your sins, have made a separation between you and your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. Did you get that? The Bible says that because of your sin, God does not hear. God does not listen to your prayer. So one who lives in sin, one who lives a life of sin, a life of rebellion against God, God does not hear his prayer. But I told you already, the amount of verses I quoted, I, we have Proverbs 15, 8. Proverbs 15, 21. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1. John chapter 9 verse 31 we have all of these verses saying that God does not hear the prayers of the sinner of the wicked but you would believe otherwise you know why because the Bible says that there are children of the devil and you know what children of the devil love they love lies they love lies lies that make them feel good Lies that make them feel good. But I'm going to go. I'm going to leave now. I'm going to be leaving because I have a meeting to go to later on this afternoon. So I'll say this last thing. Oh my. Okay. <laughs> oh my. I can't preach much longer. I'm getting tired. I'm getting hungry. I got to go. It's not. I, I already got one. No, I'm not dehydrated. I'm hungry. I gotta go. I gotta go. I've been here. I've been here for two hours and um, fourteen minutes now. 
I've been here two hours and 15 minutes. I gotta, I'm gonna have to go now. So I'm gonna say this last thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read the gospel and hope that those of you who are here will listen. Prayer? All right. Achu, achu. All right, listen to what the Bible says about the gospel. For I delivered to you as the first importance what I also received. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And that he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. The Bible says that God died for the sins of all those who would believe. That when you believe in him, you will be saved. You know why? Because when God changes your heart and you believe, he gives you his righteousness. And then when God looks at you, he no longer sees your sin. But he sees the righteousness of Christ that he imputed to you when Christ took your sin on the cross in the past. And if you were living in those days, he took your sin in those days. And God can rightly accept you. God can rightly forgive you. Why? Because you are in Christ. And Christ, by virtue and by merit of all that he has done, he has earned for you and for myself righteousness, perfection, holiness, and ultimately and instantly eternal life. Eternal life. Eternal life. So all of you here can have eternal life. But since you cannot... Repent on your own. Since you cannot repent on your own and you cannot believe in God on your own, you have to fall on your knees tonight and say, God, I cannot save myself. I cannot repent on my own. God, change my heart and I will believe. I love you here. God bless you. Have a good evening. So repent of your sins and trust in Him and you will be forgiven. Repent of your sins and trust in Him and you will be forgiven. And take no glory for yourself. Hmm? And take no glory for yourself. Because it is not because of you why God chose you. It is because of God why He chose you. Because God is a Savior. And He saves those He wishes. He saves those He wants. Because God can do as He pleases with His creation. God can do what He wishes with His creation. When you believe in God, when you trust in God, you have to repent of your sin. And you have to live a life of repentance. You can't say you love God and steal people's money. You can't say you love God and walk around looking like a prostitute. You cannot say you love God and get drunk every night. You cannot say you love God and smoke weed and cigarettes. You can't say you love God. You can't say you love God. And you are living in fornication. Having sex before marriage. You can't say you love God and you're living in that. You can't say you love God and you are living in fornication. Having sex before marriage. You can't say you love God and you're gossiping. You shut people behind their back. Praise the Lord!
I am making these things clear. You can't say you love God and live in sin. That's hypocrisy. Wrong. Hypocrite do them thing there. You can't say you love God. Preach it, Pastor. Preach it. And you live in adultery. Because there are people who are married and they have somebody on the side. You can't claim to love God and live in sin. You know what the Bible says about those who don't love God? The Bible says about those who don't love God. This is what the Bible says about those who don't love God. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22, it says this. If anyone does not love the Lord, he is accursed. Did you hear that? If anyone does not love the Lord, he is accursed. Lucky old, lucky old. Good driving, brother, good driving. <laughs> As I was saying, anyone who does not love God, anyone who does not love God, The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 16, 22, if you do not love the Lord, you are accursed. How do you know you love the Lord? John chapter 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you are not living in obedience to God, you are accursed, the Bible says. And let me tell you all something you might disagree with. Let me tell you all something you might disagree with. If you go to church and the pastor does not preach about sin, something wrong. If you go to church and the pastor does not preach about sin, something is wrong. If all he's preaching in the church is grace and mercy and love and he's not telling you that you're a sinner, something is wrong. Because the only way you can be saved, the only way you can receive grace and mercy is if you know you need it. Is if you know you're a sinner. Is if you know you are in need of God's grace. Anything, let me take out you, boy. Bumbo Rascat, how you feel like Gaza? If you say anything, I'll chew up. All right, I'll empty up. How will you? You can't have a preach. Preach, Pastor. The people here, they're easy, you know. <laughs> Look, just, listen, just listen carefully listen careful what I'm saying. If you go to a church, and the pastor does not preach about sin. You know what's going to happen? You are going to feel comfortable in the church. You're going to feel comfortable going back to your man, one of your husband. You're going to feel comfortable going back to your stealing. You're going to feel comfortable. But you're not supposed to feel comfortable in church when you're living in sin because it's supposed to be convicted of sin. If anybody feels comfortable in church, something is wrong. God bless you. You have to repent. You have to trust in Christ. You have to believe in Christ. This is the only way of salvation. Salvation is in no one else but Christ alone. Selassie, I can't save you. Anybody else who follows Selassie, I can't save you. In dead, I'm a dead man. And there are those who smoke weed and worship Selassie. You call Selassie the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And you call him the Lion of the tribe of Judah. 
Anybody who's a Rastafarian worshiping Selassie, they might go to hell. Selassie, I cannot save you. Selassie, I cannot save any of you. Only Christ. Only Christ alone. He calls himself the only way, the only truth, and the only life. The way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by him. No one gets to God but by Christ. You have to be accepted in Christ. That's why you have to be in Christ before you are heard by God in prayer. That's why God has to change your heart first and then you come to Him. Because you will not go to God unless God changes your heart. You will not trust in Christ unless God changes your heart. You have to believe in the only way of salvation and that is Christ alone. Christ alone. Christ the King. Christ the Savior. Only Christ alone. God bless you, man. God bless you. You must stop smoking weed, doing it. You must stop smoking weed, man. It's not good. It's not right. All right. So remember, remember all that I said earlier today. Remember, remember what I said earlier today. If you are living in sin, and you are saying of yourself, when you die, you're gonna go to heaven. That is a lie. Do not believe that. There are some of you who might be thinking in your mind, God will understand. God will understand. No such thing. God is not going to understand anything. Because when you say God will understand, what you're saying in essence is this. God will accept and condone your sin when you die. God will not accept you if you die in your sin so please please i beg you repent today because none of you here know when you're going to die none of you here know when you're going to die I went I went to St. Lucia for three years and I came back and I can't count on my fingers how many people died who used to live in Sandy Bay before I came back I can't count I went to St. Lucia and I came back after three years and over ten people died who lived in Sandy Bay, who I know, before I came back. How many of you know when you're going to die? How many of you know when your last day on earth is? Do you know if you're going to die today? Do you know if you're going to die today? None of you know. And guess what now? This is true. The reason why you're alive is because God is preserving your life. That's why you're alive. And the Bible says that anybody who's a friend of the world, James 4.4, 4, is an enemy of God. So guess what now? There are enemies of God who God is preserving their lives. You are God's enemy and God is preserving your life. How many of you here would preserve the life of your enemy? How many of you here would save your enemy? How many of you here would see your enemy suffering and help them? Some of you, some of you, if you saw your enemy struggling right now, you rejoice. Some of you, if you saw your enemy dying of thirst and dying of hunger, you, re you rejoice. 
The Bible says that you are God's enemy if you are living in sin. And guess what? God is preserving your life. God is preserving your life. But you have to also know this. You have to, you have to also know this. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 20, 39. Verse 39. The Bible says, I am He, and there is no God besides me. I am the one who puts to death and gives life. If you thought that the devil is the one who kills and God gives life, you thought wrong. God is the one who kills and God is the one who gives life. Ask yourself the question, when God go kill you, when God go take your life, because whenever God ready to take your life, no gathering can protect you. Some of you wear God ring, gathering. Some of you wear gathering. Some of you wear guard rings. And you think that that can protect you. It's not going to protect you. It can't protect you. It won't protect you. And no final, no final say me a true word, me a dash word. If you don't dash word fool, no, I don't go no so I live in a sin. I don't go no so God no like one of them. I don't go no. We're supposed to come down here and say God love one of them and the good. We're supposed to come down here and say God love how you find the cake with the girl them. You're good. One black, one black drop on you and cut off him, you're three. I'm supposed to come down here and lie to your faces and say God love you and God go accept you just the way he is. I have to tell you the truth. I can't know the truth and not tell you because guess what? If I lay down in my bed and hear someone of you down here dead, and I could have told you the truth and I did not tell you. I'm going to go ball. I'm going to cry. I am going to cry for you because I knew the truth and I did not tell you. And the truth is this. If you don't repent, you're going to hell. If you don't believe in Christ, you're going to hell. Repent of your sins, man. I'm trusting our Christ before you're dead. Because you don't know when your last day is. You don't know when your last day is. It could be today. Your last day could be today. You could go to bed tonight and die in your sleep. Not you, brother. Not you, brother. Yo, not you. The truth say anybody can deny their sleep. Anybody. Not you. Hey brother, not you. Not you say anybody can deny their sleep. Not you. Don't make, don't make the love for money carry your hell, brother. Don't make ya. Don't make ya. Don't make ya, man. Yo, brother, you know what, you know what money do? Let me tell you something about money. Money run out. They didn't know that, no. Money run out for everything. Because you go constantly chase money because you go always the run out. But you're going to die chasing it. But me no, but yo, I don't want me no way to go hell do a brother. Me know where you go hell, brother. God know me know where you go hell. No man, a fire down there, brother. Fire down there. A pure fire there, hell, brother. No money down there. A pure fire down there, brother. Right now, me hear someone man dead. Me don't want to mention his name on my platform. Me ball, Saint Lucia. Me ball because I guess what? Me know Saint God I hell because he never repent. The man that burn weed and dead. Gone hell, gone burn. 
Me don't want you to go to hell. So I come down, you come preach. Me don't want nobody to go to hell. You don't need to know the truth. <laughs> Say if you're not dead, you don't want to go to hell. I have to repent, brother. I have to turn from the sin. Me love you all I know enough to tell me the truth. Me love you all I know. Me don't see like the pastor that I love sit down in a church. I only preach to church people. Me come down here and take the opposition. Me come down here and make you cross me out. Me don't care. Me tell me the truth. Me have acceptance in a church. Church people them listen to me and they don't cuss me. But don't cuss me out enough time. I'm welcoming. Me love it. It's all right. Because if you have to curse me out, if it takes you cursing me out for you to know the truth, I'm willing for you to curse me out. <laughs> Repent before the dead. Repent before you die. Believe in Christ before you die. If you have breath in your body, you have time to repent. You have time to trust in Christ. Repent and trust in Christ before you die in your sin. Repent. Because if you repent, God will forgive you. God will wipe away all your sins. God will forgive all your sins if you repent. And I see them. God will forgive all your sins if you repent today. God will sanctify you. God bless you. God will save you. God will declare you righteous. God will declare you holy. God will declare you perfect in Christ. By the merits of Christ. By the works of Christ. You have to repent. Stop smoke weed. Stop smoke cigarette. Weed is a cancer stick. The Bible says that you should be sober minded. Weed is not the healing of the nation. Weed is killing you. It is a sin to smoke weed. Stop smoking weed. Because you know what, I'm going to say something that you guys aren't going to like. Anybody who smokes weed, anybody who smokes cigarettes, you're sucking on something. Anybody who smokes weed and smokes cigarettes, you are sucking on something. You're sucking on smoke, you're sucking on something. And when last, when last, when last did you agree with the notion men in Jamaica who suck a boss and big man and done stop smoking weed it's wrong stop getting drunk it's wrong and you know what else something that is so popular in Jamaica so popular or the love of sex before the married and the reason why I'm talking about these things so much is because it's so pervasive it is so pervasive. Love have sex before you marry. You don't want to marry puss in bag. Don't no call it. Puss in bag. Don't no call it. That's you, brother. Yo, yo, bro. Bro, that's you. You have to sample it first. That's you. What do you say? Before you marry. Before you marry, you have to test you out first. That's you. Amen. Before you get married to the woman, you have to test it out first, right? Test it out. Me not tell you how you know how. Me not want to mention the word. You see? That's true. You see what I'm saying? Amen. Love that. Me not have no reason for to believe you. I don't have no reason not to believe you. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Me wish me could have done that to me. Me didn't do it. Me didn't slip. God bless you. 
Hey, yo, we have we have a man here who got married before he had sex with his wife. God bless him. God bless him. Because nowadays, Pastor, me married before sex with my wife. Amen. Praise the Lord. The prayer, the prayer I am, because I couldn't do that. Hey, I did not do that, and I did not do it. I could not resist. I was young and I was naive. And if I didn't tell me it's like, I call my wife right now, I'm a key, I'm a key. No, man, I have no reason. If somebody come to me and tell me, say them, they, they have a million dollars, I can't tell them, say no. Because I don't have no reason not to believe you. Sorry? They might go to hell too. If they don't repent, they might go to hell. Any man who cheats on his wife is going to hell if you don't repent. You are an adulterer. That's what the Bible calls you. Adultery. But some, some, some are no man, you know, no love too much woman. Yes. No love too much woman. On the one, they're the hundreds and the thousands. Amen. And I tell you, I chew that. Amen. I chew. Hey, this is true. This is true. You want them in the thousands and the hundreds. And you want to have them on rotation. The true boy, they want to have the girl on rotation. No. No, man, I want no one, brother. I want no one, brother. Ask them about me. See me walk on the road, me look down because I don't want to see the girl them. <laughs> May I run from the girl them, brother? I have to run from them. No. That man, one alone, man. Me, me find the best one. God bless you, God bless you. So everybody, just, just, just remember what I've said. I'm going to leave now. I'm going to leave now. Remember what I said. God sent the Son into the world to save sinners. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. We all have to go to Christ in order for us to be saved. Run to Christ. Leave your sin behind. And live a life of righteousness. And stop doing the sinful things that you continue to do. Fight against it. Fight against it. You know why? Because one day you're going to die. Everybody here, you know I'm not telling, telling a lie. Everybody here is going to die one day. You know what? A hundred years from now, all of us will be in the ground. All of us will already be dead. A hundred years from now, all of us will already be dead. We are all, all our bodies are going to go into the ground and worms are going to eat them. The pretty face where the girl them have, the nice body where the girl them have all them something there. Worm go near it. Worms are going to eat it. When you die, your body is going to be eaten by worms. And your soul is going to go to heaven or hell. Where are you going to go when you die? Is it well with your soul? Are you at peace with God? Because you're most dead. You're most dead. The Satan of Patwa Janai. 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 How are you in there? You're good, Janai. <laughs> Janai preach the Patwa. They preach it. We can't do it because we stutter too much. Let me say this in the Patwa. You're most dead one day. You're most dead. You're ago dead. And you know what? Every day you wake up, you get closer to your death. Every day. That does not concern you. It should. And you know what else too? Every breath you take, it takes you closer to your last breath. You gotta run out of time. You're running out of time. You're losing time. Don't die in your sins. Don't wait until you're dead before you go to God. 
because it's going to be too late. And please hear the cry in my voice. Hear the earnestness in my voice. Hear the honesty in my voice. If you die in your sin, it is too late for you. You're going to go to hell. I don't want that to happen to no, no. I don't want any of you to go to hell. So please repent. Please trust in Christ. And I'm going to try to come here every Friday and every Saturday. Because there's a soup sale down here on Fridays and Saturdays. And I'm going to hope that you all hear the word of God and believe. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Go pray, man, pray on the mic. So you go, you go bow on the head too? Okay. All right, God bless, God bless. Let's pray. God, I come before your throne today to give you thanks for your word, to give you thanks for your glory, to give you thanks for the opportunity to preach your word, and thank you for the people who listen to your word. I ask you, God, that you will cause an increase because your word says that Apollos watered, Paul planted, but you cause the increase. If you don't cause the increase, they will not be saved. So I ask you, God, cause the increase that they may repent of their sins, trust in you, and be saved from all their sins. Keep them safe, Lord. Bless them and cause them to know that you are God and you are God alone. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. I always pray first, my best bring make a year. Because I don't know how to go bow the heads to me. Sorry about that, buddy. God bless you. Yeah. It's the first time for everything, man. Yeah, well, I just finished up uh, street preaching. Yeah, so I did not know that you guys would actually bow your heads too, that's why. All right, all right. I mean, you know that? No, so I'm going to start to that. Master, can